Hey guys, Bad Infos here and welcome to a computer build guide. I waited 3 weeks for all of this to be delivered to me and it's finally here and I'm finally ready to make this video. So I have built many computers in the past, I have worked in a PC hardware shop before, I have assembled many computers, however I have never built something this expensive. This is top of the line, pretty much all of it is top of the line, the CPU, the GPU is almost top of the line, this is top of the line. The only the case is not, I guess, but everything else is pretty hardcore and I'm kinda worried about how I'm gonna handle all of this, but I have the time, I can I can take 2-3 days building this thing, no problem, I'm gonna take it slow and I'll take you guys with me because I think that I should show you how I build this thing because many of you are gonna be curious and I just wanna have a, a video of me building this thing, so we can treat this as a guide if you want to i'm gonna be as precise as possible no uh talking in between and whatnot i'm gonna be to the point and show you everything you want to know what i have for this build is a fractal design defined c case the amd ryzen 7 1800x the gigabyte aurus ax370 gaming k7 motherboard the gtx msi gtx 1080 a gaming X plus or something. The Corsair RM 650X uh, PSU. This is the cooler for the CPU. It's a Kraken uh, X52 by NZXT. All the RAM is HyperX Fury DDR4 16 gigabytes, and I'll be using the SSD for my old build. I'm gonna. It's not in here, but I'm gonna put it in here and later on in the build. I mean because my PC or my old PC is currently on at the moment and later on I'll move my HDD from there to the new build which is a Western Digital 6GB black it's a black version and I don't think I missed anything so yeah guys I think this is it for the intro uh, uh, first of all I want to apologize for any um, bad camera angles I don't have a tripod so it will be kinda difficult to record this video but Bear with me, this is my first thing doing this for the first time. So, are you ready? Because I am. Let's start the build. I think it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. None of these things was in the boxes. The boxes were completely empty, and I have unboxing videos of every single one of these parts, and you can check every single one of these in the description if you're interested. So, let's begin with the actual build. The first thing I like doing is getting the motherboard out of the box and putting in the CPU and the cooler. So I'm gonna get you guys closer to me and we're gonna start the build. And again apologies for the bad camera angles but there's nothing I can do about that. So the first thing I wanna start with is removing this plate. So this is the back plate which comes with the motherboard, we put it on the back because it's a back plate obviously, it goes on the back, put it on the table and you're gonna notice that we have four different screws, we have these, and we have third ones which we're also not gonna use, what we're gonna use are these, I know they look pretty similar to these ones however we need these ones basically if it doesn't fit don't use it and screw this in just like this just a small correction instead of using the ones I showed you you should use these ones instead because it will provide a better connection so use these instead of these later on in the build I did use these ones now if you want this could be your previous step or this one, however I like doing it after I install the screws. What you do is take your CPU out and put it on the socket. First of all you have to unhatch this and search for a triangle. We have a triangle on this side and you have to search for the triangle over here on the CPU. This triangle has to fit with that triangle. 
if you don't find a triangle, of course there is going to be a triangle, but you can also look at these holes on the bottom. Do not touch the pins and do not touch the top of the CPU. If you touch the top of the CPU, it's going to have grease all over it, even if you're not greasy, and gently put it in. It has to get in perfectly on its own. Do not push it. After you put it in, make this motion. Nope, it doesn't move at all. And what you have to do is put this to the bottom. And there we go, the, the CPU is on the board. Next I'm gonna install the two fans to the radiator. Basically align them like so. The NZXT logo needs to be on this side where the cables come from. Just to point something out here, the placement of the radiator and any fans in the case is highly subjective. No matter where I mount the radiator, there's gonna be somebody complaining. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount it here and later on change it to another place and test out the temperatures the other way around. But for now it will be like this. Take your screws, these long screws, and put them in like so. And screw them in. And do the same for the next fan. Okay, so once you take this pesky thing out, you can see the thermal paste. Do not touch the thermal paste under any circumstances. What you need to do is unplug this one, take it out, and put this retention bracket in its place. So what you do is push it forward and move it around, like that, and it fell. Now we need to do the same, but in reverse. Whoops, I wasn't recording for this part, but basically do the same exact thing, but in reverse. Put it backwards and make sure the text aligns downwards to the motherboard. This is the downside of the motherboard. Make sure the text is aligned perfectly. And this text, the NZXT logo on the fans is also aligned perfectly. Also make sure to push this a little bit just to make good contact with the CPU. Now we need to screw this in. And for that I'll need these. Put one on each corner. And with that the CPU is completely installed, if you lift it up and if it doesn't fall off, obviously it is installed hopefully correctly. And next we have the RAM. The RAM is pretty easy to install, however you have to pay attention to something very important. No matter on which system you're installing this, make sure to read the user's manual for the motherboard and see on which dim slots this works best. Let me focus. Good. As you can see on DDR4.1 and DDR4.2, you should install a dual channel. So let me take you closer guys to see exactly where these things are. As you can see, DDR1, DDR4.1 and DDR4.2 uh, are this first one and the third one coming from this side. So install one of them here and the second one here. So what you do is take this down and this down. Make sure this hole aligns to this perfectly. Make a connection like that and push downwards until you hear the click. There we go, that was pretty difficult because of the camera angle. It's very hard recording this video, I gotta say. Push these down too. Push this down. Make sure we have clearance to the CPU cooler. Click, click, there we go. The RAM is installed. Before we put everything into the case, I want to remove this fan. And in order to remove this fan, I need to remove the front panel of the case. And the reason why I want to remove this fan is because I want to put the radiator on the front. Of course, I could put it on the top as well, but I think the front is a better choice and in the future I could move it to the top. Which on this case is actually pretty easy to do. What you do is pull it upwards like that and there we go. Now we need to unscrew the fan. But first remove the dust filter like this. 
As you can see we have 4 screws over here, we need to unscrew them and take the fan out. And the fan is no more! And we're almost ready to put the motherboard in the case. However, as you can see, I don't have any standoffs in my case. It does not come with them. So you need to install these ones. Let me focus. These standoffs on which the motherboard can stand. Obviously, that's what that's why they're called standoffs. This is an ATX motherboard, which means that you have to put these standoffs on the ATX places. So let's do just that. Now this step is very important and this could even be your very first step to building the PC. Make sure the AO shield is on the case. If it is not, you have to take everything apart and build it again. I have done that in the past, so make sure this is installed before you continue. How do you know which side is which? Usually these are on the bottom, as you can see rear. It basically says everything you want to know. Focus. There we go. It just says what you need to know here, but the bottom of the case is this side. So, this is the back side. And here comes the tricky part. We need to put the motherboard in the case itself. Make sure that the holes on the AO shield are exactly like this. Make sure this is facing the correct way with the NZXT letters that way. Put it basically in the, at the right at the rough position, like that. Make sure that the holes are exactly aligned, and they are. And now we need to screw it in. So far so good, as you can see, these standoffs are exactly in the holes. Focus. Very good. Not exactly, of course, because I haven't tied any of them yet. I just have to align them correctly and screw in the holes. I'll do this off camera and I'll use these ones, let me get them, there we go, these ones, in order to connect the motherboard to the case. Ok, the bolts are screwed and now I have to figure out exactly where I should put the radiator. As you can see I have to screw it in from here, I could move it this way, all the way down here, or I could keep it here, and I prefer keeping it here just so it is centered like so and it is a good uh, place in the case as well so i'll screw this in this as well and i'll be back once i'm done that was actually a lot easier than i thought i guess mounting it on the top would be the hard part but this was really really easy so next i need to put the filter on isn't it gorgeous oh so beautiful i gotta say and i'm not even done i have still a lot more to do the cable management, that's gonna be the hard part. Okay, so next of all we have the power supply. Now, in order to slide in the power supply, you need to remove this from the back side. And I have two mounting options. I could turn the fan, let me get the power supply. I could turn the fan facing upwards over here. It could take air from inside the case and bring it back to the back side or I could make it I could turn it this way and make it take air from the bottom side from outside and put it back from the outside as well which is what I'm gonna do what I need to do here is align this bracket correctly to the holes we have a hole here a hole here and a hole 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 here so take a screw one of these is gonna do just fine. Take the screwdriver and screw these in. Now I have two options. I could put the PSU in the case and then put the cables in it or I could do it beforehand. Doing it over here in the wide open space is a lot easier and a lot faster. So, first of all, this SATA the cable I'm gonna put in. It's very hard to see because of the stupid camera placement. The ATX cable which goes below, it will be very hard putting it in because of the camera again. The PCIe cables for the video card, I have only one so I'm gonna use only one cable obviously. And finally the one for the CPU which I'm gonna put 
right next to the video card ones and that's it for the cables lots of cables i could also plug this in this is for the hard drive i have a sata one which turns into three other ones and i could potentially put it in i put the ssd in this one in the hd in this one however the ssd is going to be pretty far away from the hdd so that would probably be impossible i'll see what i can do but if i have to I'll just plug in the other SATA cable. The next step is to put all of these cables through this hole and then the PSU. Of course you could skip this step if you do it the other way around. If you plug in the cables into the PSU after you have already placed it. So you could completely skip this step but I prefer doing it this way. And finally you have to screw these in. You just have to find the hole. Did I find it? Are you sure I did? Yes, I did find the hole. Very nice. And here comes the hard and annoying part. I have lots of cables to plug in and it's gonna take me a very long time so I'm gonna do this all off camera. I'll do some cable management and then at the very end I'm gonna plug in the video card. So, I'll see you in a little bit. And here it is, it looks kinda weird, I know it's a small little fan on this huge place. In the future I could buy some more fans, but for now this is gonna do. If you have watched my case unboxing video you would know that this case comes with a removable top. And if you do remove it, it's suggested that you should use the dust filter, it's completely magnetic. So just put it up here and there we go. I have a fan at the top, if I do that however, I'm gonna sacrifice lots of noise because first of all I have a fan over there and I don't have soundproof material on the top which means a lot more noise coming from my machine. Is that a good idea? I'm not sure yet. But I'll see for the future. And here comes the most exciting part for most of you people and it's not my most exciting part but it's still pretty exciting. The video card installation. So where should you install your video card? You see you have three stops most people use these two. Now which one is the best for you guys? You should really consult your mother book manual. Now 99% of the time probably it is on the top stop but you should really just in case check your mother book manual and see which one is best for you. So what you want to do here, uh, you can't see me, is unscrew the top and the bottom port, the one below it. Small correction, it is not the one on the top and the one below it but the second one and the one below it. So, here we go, the video card. Now normally I would install this on the table, but for you guys, just for you, I'll do it differently. So first of all, before you do anything, remove the sticker. If you don't, and if you turn the PC on, the fan is not gonna spin, and you would have lots and lots and lots of issues. First you need to unhook this and connect the video card, which is easier said than done. Because as you can see, I don't think you can actually see, because my camera work is very bad, I don't have much clearance between the fans from the radiator and the video card, which could be a problem, but for now it is not. Let's see. Oh, there we go. I need to... This is why you should do this on the table, but I'm hardcore. There we go, it is connected, we have connection. And I want, to, I want to show you something guys. Do you see the clearance between the radiator and the video card? Yeah, it's not much at all. Let me screw these in. And here we go guys, I screw these two in. They're back in their rightful place, it does not move at all. Which is gonna make operations a lot more silent. So, next is the connections. You, you should have this connection and this connection. Your video card could have only one connection, one 8-pin connection, it could have two 8-pin connections, two 6-pin connections, whatever. I have one 8-pin, which goes into here, and one 6-pin, which goes into here. If I want to, I could make it 8-pin as well, a second 8-pin connection. Okay, so first of all, put the 8 pin connection, connect these two like that and put them like this. Okay, it clicked. Again, I advise doing this on the table itself, not like I'm doing it. 
Okay, so since everything else is done, I need to put in the drives. I have an SSD, I'm gonna put the SSD on this mounting spot which goes right over here. I took it off just to look at my backplate of the CPU. So what you do is take the SSD, this is the SSD, this is an 850 Pro, half a terabyte from Samsung of course. What you do is put it wherever you want to, you can put it on this side, you can put it on this side, does not matter. I'll put it in the middle just because it looks better, even though I'm probably never gonna look at the back of the case, except when I do some maintenance. Align these correctly and just screw them in. Okay, so it's on here, as you can see it cannot fall at all. Very good. Now, what I have to do is put this plate back on in its rightful place, which is pretty darn easy. It's a good thing this plate is here because I don't know where I would even put this thing because there's no other place perfect for it. Look at it. Great spot. It's behind the case. I'm never going to see it ever again. Okay, so we need a, a, a SATA data cable going into the SATA data slot. I can't see, that's why I do it on the table laying down, but for you guys I made a compromise. So this goes to the fans of the CPU, and I know the cable management is terrible right now, and of course it is. You know what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this, put it on the bottom, oh there we go, finally, it took a while. Anyway, let's plug this back in, I like it so. And this should be placed over here. So, everything, absolutely everything, is done. Now what's left is the cable management, which I'm gonna do after I test out the PC. If it works well, then I'll cable manage it. So let's move to the other room and start it up. Okay guys, the moment of truth is here. Is this thing gonna turn on from the first attempt? We shall see. I have the keyboard and mouse connected, the internet, audio, display port and of course the power. I probably not gonna need the internet or the audio cable because it does not have audio drivers or internet drivers or any drivers for that matter. It has the old drivers from my old PC and later on I'm gonna reinstall the Windows but first I wanna see if it's gonna turn on and hopefully load Windows. If it doesn't load Windows that's completely fine, I just wanted to turn on from the first attempt. So. Are you ready? Let's turn on the power. And let's press the button. So far so good. Oh, you can see. This is on. Are these fans on? They're also on. These are on. This is spinning, this is spinning as well. This is gonna load windows or anything for that matter. So far nothing, but it's on. That's a good start, it looks absolutely beautiful. But yeah, it doesn't load anything on the display. Hmm. That's we Ah, there we go, there we go. Progress, progress, Aurus. It is loading something, Windows, I think. I do have Windows still on this SSD without any drivers, so getting devices ready oh oh my goodness 66 percent i could load in the bios and see how it is in there but first i want to load something not the bios at the moment i want to also monitor my temperature of course all the fans are spinning this should not spin under no load and this also should not spin but they do spin at the moment Oh, my mistake, my mistake, this is not spinning. Okay, that's fine. Completely fine. Ah, it loaded! It loaded! <laughs> there we go. Can you see this? Actually, I'm not sure if you can actually see it. Oh, yes, you can see it. Amazing! Well, let's first, let's find something, some program which monitors temperature. So I have been monitoring this thing for like 10, 15 minutes and give it some tests. What I noticed is that if the GPU goes above 62 degrees Celsius, it, the, the fans turn on, and in like 
10 seconds is down to 52, 53. For the rest, this makes some noise or this. One of these two make lots of noise. So I will remove either this or this because it's bugging me so much because everything else is ultra silent and one of these things makes noise. So yeah, one of you are gonna be removed. Anyway, for the temperatures, the motherboard is pretty much it's 40 average degrees. The CPU is at 50, about 50 degrees Celsius. The SSD is at 33 and the GPU fluctuates from if it reaches 62, which it, it doesn't go quick at 62, it doesn't reach it that quick, which is great. And if it reaches, it goes down super quickly because the fans turn on. Currently the fans are not on, which is great, which makes it a lot more silent. And the fans, even if the fans are on, it's still super silent, except for these stupid fans, which I'm probably gonna change because they're bugging me so much. But for now, this, is, this works great. So now what I wanna do, before I test any games and whatnot, I wanna cable manage, since everything is working correctly, I wanna cable manage and then do some more in-depth tests. Hello, this is the cable management part of the video, let me show you some stuff, this is the final look of the whole thing. What bugs me is this cable over here, which I could cable manage to the other side, I guess, but it's with it works for me right now. These cables are pretty annoying to have over here, but they're also not such a big issue, this looks absolutely amazing. These cables are pretty annoying as well, but I, but I cannot do anything about them. I routed these ones to the top instead of the bottom because I think it looks aesthetically pleasing and this is also pretty well hidden so you cannot really see this too well. If they are on the top, we have some cutouts here for these two cables and the G connector was absolutely a lifesaver, it's so great to have. This cable is pretty fat, which sucks. And this is the back side, don't worry guys there is some point to all this madness but Everything is perfectly aligned over here. I installed my hard drive too and I had to use a separate SATA connector in order to plug it in. Because as you can see this one is too short to use one of these on the bottom as well from the SSD to the hard drive. Which added an extra SATA cable to the mix and I was not very happy about that. But as you can see we have some places for these cables as well. They are pretty well hidden. This one as well. This one comes from the CPU fan. This one was the hardest to work with because I had to improvise here and put it on the bottom. And this one is visible as well. I used only one zip tie. Oh, actually a light. I used another one over here. But all in all, this is my best cable management by far and I'm really happy with how it looks. Before I let you guys go, I want to show you some interesting things for me. I don't know if they're interesting for you. If they are not, then the PC build is over. You can go now. Thank you for watching. Now, this is the first PC I have ever gotten, uh, my parents bought it for me in 2002, I was 10 years old back then, I was so surprised, it was a surprise for me, I did not expect a PC, I owned an Atari 2600 Junior back then, so this was a step up, a huge step up from that, and I was really really happy, uh, currently it's very dusty I know, because nobody uses it, and also use this hard drive, from this PC I got this hard drive because nobody uses the PC anymore and I use it as an external drive at the moment. Don't ask me how I did this, this is an IDE drive, it was very difficult finding the correct cables to make it work and not disconnect every 3 seconds but I did it and currently I use this along with this, I put it over here, so dusty holy crap, put it over here and there we go, external drive. Now I think I'm pretty sure I upgraded the RAM once and the hard drive too. One of the hard drives failed I think, I'm not sure. But yeah, this is the first PC, let's move on to the second one. This is the second one and I know it's very dusty and it pains me to look at it so after I'm done with this video I'm actually gonna clean the whole thing. But anyway, I got this with my money in 2008, I'm pretty sure it was. And it served me pretty well, at the start I had lots of trouble with the processor, they gave me a dud. So I didn't understand much about computers, I took it to many places to fix it, nobody fixed it. They got me this CPU cooler, 
back then it did not work because it was <laughs> broken the piece the CPU and I changed the CPU later on upgraded it and I'm pretty sure I added some RAM no I'm not sure I added something else to it to upgrade it but I had lots of trouble ah this was the first PC I used for recording videos I started my YouTube channel on this PC so thank you buddy for starting me off but um, ah, you're nothing right now for me I'm not sure if this counts, but I'll show it to you anyway because it's a piece of my history. This is my laptop, I bought it mainly for university, it's an Acer Aspire and I still use it every single day, it works pretty fine, it does not handle any games whatsoever, but I don't use it for games, mainly for videos and to work on, uh, you know, my videos, work on my videos and watch other people's videos and whatnot. Let's move on to the next one. And this is the PC I use to this day. Any rendering, any gaming, any whatevering was done on this PC to this day. From 2014, April 2014 to this day. And unfortunately this is gonna be the first PC I'm actually gonna sell. None of the previous ones I sold because I couldn't get much money for the parts and other people can use them. But this one, yeah, I need the cash and I could get some pretty decent cash for the parts in this thing. Currently the SSD, SSD is not installed because I put it on my new PC. And this is the hard drive I was talking about. I'll put it of course in my new PC. I won't sell it. And I guess I could sell the Toshiba one, which is this one. I'll format it three ten times even. So take a good look at it. This is gonna be the last time you're gonna see this PC in my hands. And I'm pretty sure you all know what this piece of crap is. If you want an unboxing video, I'm gonna repeat this. If you want an unboxing video of any one of these parts, even the RAM, check the description down below. I have videos of those too. But I gotta say, this was the most fun I have had in the past year or two. I'm not joking, this was ultra mega fun to assemble. Now what's left is to put the panels on. And that's it for this video guys. I hope you found it useful and or entertaining and I helped you out with your build. If you want to see a build of this PC then check out the description. I made this video in 2014 when I got it. So yeah that's it guys, thank you so much for watching, happy gaming to me and I hope you had a good time watching.